Service Radio Station, WHYN AM 560, Springfield. And one little last quick tip for college graduates. Consider smaller companies. Large corporations are still downsizing, and the jobs are in the small and mid-sized firms. So it won't be a Fortune 500, maybe a Fortune 1000. At six minutes past seven, here's the WNNZ weather. Clearing tonight, lows 45 to 55. Considerable cloudness tomorrow, chance of a sprinkle, highs in the 70s. Tuesday, variably cloudy, chance of a shower, highs in the 70s. Partly cloudy, very warm Wednesday and Thursday, chance of a shower, highs 85 to 90. It's 55 degrees in Greater Springfield at the talk station, AM 640, WNNZ. The conversation continues on the talk station WNNZ. Here's Barbara Heisler on AM 640. 7:30 WACE, Chickabee Springfield, Hartford. Hey. Rediscover the Simsbury Town Shops, where shopping is still a pleasure. Route 10, Simsbury. Here's the latest forecast from All News 910 CNN. Gradual clearing by tonight with a low 45. For tomorrow, both sun and clouds, the chance of a late day shower and a high in the 70s. Monday night, partly cloudy with a chance of a shower, the low 50 to 60. And on Tuesday, partly to mostly sunny with a high around 80. That's the latest forecast from All News 910 CNN. You're listening to All News Radio, WNEZ, New Britain, Hartford, 910 CNN. A freighter carrying an illegal cargo. Home with a winning run in Game 7. I'll even help you a little bit, okay? Yes. Was it... Harry Walker? It was Harry Walker. <laughs> Harry the Hat. You're sure it wasn't Stan Musial? No, it was not Stan Musial. It was not Whitey Kurowski? No. It was not Marty Marion? No. It was Harry Walker? Correct. You're absolutely right. Yes. You're pretty good at this. Let me ask you one more. Sure. What Cardinal pitcher won three games? A uh, Howie Poet? Holy smokes, you're wrong. <laughs> what Cardinal pitcher won three games? In the World Series of 1946, Howie Paulette was one of their pitchers. Mm. Uh, was it Terry Brickeen, Murray Dixon, or Max Lanier? Gee, you know, I'm going back to Houts, even though I'm wrong. You think it's Paulette, huh? I think so. No, it was Harry Brickeen. Oh. All but right. you are an expert. You covered that era pretty well. We congratulate you. Hold on. Bob Joyce will take your name and address, okay? And, and thank you, sir. Oh, you're welcome. Enjoy it. That's the Boston Red Sox trivia book, little-known facts, statistics, stories, quotes, nicknames, all-time leaders, rosters, puzzles, and more from over 90 years of Red Sox history by David Neff, Bob Carroll, and Richard M. Cohen. And uh, let's see, I think that leaves us one to give away, which we'll do at some future time on some unannounced future program out of the blue, which means you must never, ever, under any circumstances, miss an edition, scheduled or otherwise, of WTIC Sports Talk with me, Arnold Dean. Thank you all for joining us. This was an unexpected pleasure. The Red Sox got rained out in Cleveland. They'll make it up in September. They're scheduled again tomorrow and Wednesday at 6.30. We have news, then we have Gil Gross coming up. So thank you for joining us. Stay tuned all evening long on... WTIC, 8 o'clock, time now for WTIC 1080 News on the hour with Sam Gingerella. The White House has agreed to trim its proposed energy tax and to seek more spending cuts in an effort to reach a compromise among Democrats in the Senate. The general agreement was reached at a meeting at the White House between President Clinton, his top lieutenants, and Senate Democratic leaders and announced by both sides earlier today. Senate Majority Leader George Mitchell of Maine outlined what the new package will look like. Job is to product. I want the results. I want jobs and incomes and growth. That's what we're producing now. That's my job. I'm confident they'll produce a plan that will give us that.
That was President Clinton telling reporters he still wants the same overall results from the new plan. Both Mitchell and administration officials said that the compromise would still seek to slice $500 billion from the federal deficit over that time period. Pratt & Whitney and union leaders have agreed on a concession package that would prevent the jet engine maker from moving 2,300 jobs out of Connecticut. Machinist union leader Andy Romagelli says he never thought there would be a day like this. But the bottom line is the agreement giving Pratt & Whitney $47 million in concessions. He says for the first time the company has agreed in writing to keep its jobs in Connecticut and depended on meeting productivity goals. Still, Romagelli says... Getting members to ratify the pact will not be an easy task. There's some uh, mixed reaction right now. Uh, people, Some people are very bitter. Some are saying uh, you can't trust them even though they put it in writing. Uh, we believe that there are some uh, guarantees in writing right now that they're not going to be able to get out of. The Southington plan is expected will close, but 660 of the 1,400 jobs there will also be saved. New technology developed by Stratford-based companies is good news for dislocated defense workers. We get more now from WTIC's Judy DeCipio. It's a new electronic wiring system for air, space, land, and sea vehicles, and it was developed by Sikorsky Aircraft and Royal Avionics. Martin Ryan, the president of Royal Avionics, says the system will reduce the weight and size of those vehicles. The result of it will be a savings of millions of dollars to the United States government and to... Uh, commercial aircraft. Ryan says his company hopes to begin production by the first of the year, creating 50 jobs next year and 600 over the next five years. Judy DiCipio, WTIC, 1080 News. President Clinton says he isn't telling who he wants on the U.S. Supreme Court just yet. He says he's thinking about potential nominees, but one official says Interior Secretary Bruce Babbitt has the short list of three names. The other two are federal judges. Here in Hartford, the political maneuvering over an $88 million pot of money from the Mashantucket Pequot Indian tribe is continuing. The State House of Representatives today rejected the Senate's version to divvy up the money. The Senate is expected to stick to its guns, meaning the measure would likely end up in a special committee. A top U.S. environmental official spent the day touring sites in Stratford which were contaminated with hazardous materials as, works be as work begins to limit exposure with a temporary cover. Robert Sussman, the deputy administrator of the Environmental Protection Agency, visited the sites with state and town officials and later attempted to assure residents that the sites, which contain asbestos, lead, and other materials, will be cleaned up. The woman who was mayor of Bridgeport oversaw the city's controversial filing for bankruptcy protection says she will seek to regain the office she lost two years ago. Mary Moran says that she has been testing the political waters and has received... A good response. She says she would probably make an official announcement either late this week or early next week. She made national news in June of 1991 when Bridgeport became the largest city since the Depression to file for bankruptcy. Moran, a Republican, was easily defeated by Democrat Joseph Gannum five months later. I'll have a look at our weather forecast coming up next. WTIC News Time is 8.04. Does your baby suffer? And that, of course, is WTIC 1080, and at 8 o'clock you heard the V in Morse code for victory that they've been using since the Second World War. The community calendar, the Middletown Alliance for the Mentally Ill, will hold its next meeting tomorrow night, June 8th, at Middlesex Hospital. The support group allows friends and family of the mentally ill to share experiences and become better informed about available services and facilities. For more information on the Alliance, contact Lenore Cameron at 345-4689. 345-4689. And now the forecast from the WCNX Weather Center. A fair night on tap tonight. Our lows will be in the 50s. Now we're going to follow that with increasing clouds on Tuesday. And the threat of showers developing in the afternoon or evening, high 70 to 75. Chance of showers Tuesday night, some fog 55 to 60. And on Wednesday, the threat of a few showers, then some sun. There is the chance of an afternoon or evening shower or thunderstorm highs in the mid-70s to lower 80s. This is meteorologist Hank Berg in the Weather Center. Live from New York, the financial capital of the world, it's today's business journal with tomorrow's business news today. And
now, here's your host, best-selling author. Hi, this is Sid Mark. The sounds of Sinatra is next, following CNN Radio News on AM 1360, WDRC Hartford. It's 4 o'clock. From the CNN News Center in Atlanta, I'm Jenny West. The United Nations requested U.S. raid on the headquarters of Somali warlord Mohammed Farah Idid is meeting with mixed reaction from the people of Somalia. Voice aboard the... Yeah, Lloyd. Listen, I have an idea that could radically advance civilization as we know it. Hey, we're prehistoric men. Let's not get fancy. Now, imagine this. We come back to the cave after a long day of berry gathering and woolly mammoth hunting. Yeah. We put our feet up on a rock and relax by a roaring fire. Fire? What's that? That's a hot burning thing we can use to cook. The woolly mammoth? Uh, no, no, the berries. Where'd we get this fire? Well, we invented. You see, all we need is some flint to make sparks, and they got loads of flint over in Thor's village. No, we, we don't want to have to talk to them. They're old, a different color. They're bad dancers. All right, we'll go to the Valley of the Sophies, then. Women? You want to deal with women? They're not like us. Forget it. Hey, listen, if this fire thing works, we're talking big bucks. Okay, maybe that new immigrant tribe has flint. You want to talk to foreigners? Hey, I'd rather talk to the tribe that uses wheelchairs. Okay, forget it. Fire is probably a stupid idea. Let's just eat our berries cold. Ah, uh, good. Pass the cream. Where'd you get that fire idea? I heard some guys in the Wesley tribe talking no about it. No wonder. What do bald guys know? The Leadership Conference Education Fund and the Advertising Council remind you that our strength, our progress, depend on our diversity. The Cutting Edge News Talk Station. News Talk 14, WPOP Hartford, where the news comes first every hour on the hour. WKND, the music you want, the information you need, and we're cruising through about a 45-minute hmm, power set. Mickey Howard and Release Me. Well, coming up this hour, got some SWV, Cheryl Pepsi Riley, Michael Jackson, Karen Wheeler, and I'll tell you what, when you hear that SWV, I'll take my third caller with a power card, and I will give away a pair of concert tickets to check them out, okay? <laughs> Wraps it up for yours truly on this fun field Saturday evening. It's been my pleasure being a part of your Saturday evening. And we do it all again tomorrow at 6 a.m. in the yawning time, okay? We got Kooza relaxers we're still giving away. We're also still giving away movie passes to the Tina Turner What's Love Got to Do With It. And we're also giving away concert tickets to the Coca-Cola Summer Fest. So you keep it locked where you got it, power 1480 a.m. WKND, remember these kind words. And these words are for all the graduating students from all the area high schools in the Hartford County, okay? Spoon gives you a teaches you a lesson, then gives you a test. Life gives you a test that teaches you a lesson. Welcome to the School of Hard Knocks. Until Monday at 6 p.m., you all take care and love one another, okay? Peace and love, power, 1480 a.m. WKND. Bye-bye. Radio, Christian 1550, WLVX, Bloomfield, Hartford.